Hey folks, Tyler Edmund here. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, today, we're covering scale. This came from uh, you know one of my students and they had asked, do you have any tips? Do you have a video about conveying large sense of scale? And I didn't. So here it is, guys. Enjoy. So the first tip, I think, takes into account we have a basic understanding of atmospheric perspective. And that means, right, the further we are from an object, the more layers of atmosphere, more layers of particles, you know, that human eye has to see and, you know, that exists in a physical space. So things are going to get lighter, things are going to get less contrast, and it's going to move toward the color of whatever the atmosphere is. This is very easy to see in, in photography, and again, this is a great way to convey a large sense of scale. As you can see, the further we go in the background, the shapes, they're softer, they're, they're large, they're very much filled with just atmospheric color. And so it's a great way to con convey scale because we lose all the details. Our eye is just imagining what's kind of happening in there, and it's, it's purely by simple, in large shapes and it forces the detail to the smaller things to the things closer you know to us in this space and so one of my favorite artists that does this exceptionally well is you know, Simon Bernarchi here so he, as you can see in both these examples they're filled with both great scale and atmospheric perspective as a result so in both of these cases the shapes are getting simpler and kind of larger in the background just to sell that massive mountain in both these cases and it's the shapes are filling with color and light of that atmosphere a really fantastic way to get that that sense of height and depth in this case and so next up is a very effective technique in conveying scale and that's changing up the angle what we basically don't want if you're going for something that looks either very large or very high or you know for looking down very deep is to change the angle alter the perspective to suit your needs I can't say how common enough I have to kind of go over this with a lot of students trying to convey this and they're giving us a very neutral right there's nothing wrong with this angle except for that that it, it's very neutral it's not telling the viewer how to feel how to think it's not adding to the narrative that you're trying to push with with the uh, illustration or concept changing that angle and, and dictating that much can go a lot so a very simple common example of this right is with buildings are we looking down into a massive sense of depth we're gonna have a much higher horizon line up top or we're gonna be on the ground looking up at a massive massive very high building and that have a it will have a very low horizon well well below where the uh, image is actually framed and one of my favorite recent movies was uh, Klaus on Netflix. Th this film was filmed with these types of shots in mind, as we can see from these two great examples as well. This one, and this one's a great example of it here on the left of looking down into this massive town that's portrayed in these you know, simple shapes made up of a bunch of littler shapes. But it has a great sense of depth to it, as you can see. Like we can't even see the horizon, and we're look it just has that amount of depth uh, vertically with that. Now this is a little bit more of a a modest take on that this is using that same idea in theory within the confines of an interior space right but the angle is very low the horizon is nearly at the height of the character's feet level and it adds to that sense of height and scale of all these looming statues above and behind them right it's very effective had the angle been a little more neutral and higher had the shot been you know not quite as, as wide in that res respect it just would not have the impact that it does like that we can see here and so the next major tip is the crop and that as you can see here is literally just the way we frame and set up our shot and our scenes Raphael Lacoste had a great example here like imagine you know, you know if the image did keep going it still would look massive but the fact that he just framed it so we can only see the bottom of this it only leads it only leads us the viewer to participate in this trying to imagine what could be above there or how high it could potentially go but it's a great simple method to conveying a you know a large amount of scale another one of my favorite concept designers James Paik does this here as well like we we can get a good sense of how big this is but I mean we don't really know how long it's going you know laterally we don't quite know the verticality of a lot of that 
He's adding a few other techniques in here as well as having like human scales and, and very smaller shapes against bigger ones, but yeah, we'll cover that in a moment. But just you know, sheerly deciding to opt out of showing the whole object is a great way to show how big something may or may not be. And that does lead us to here, right? Small versus large shapes. The easiest way you can ever break something like this down is using very simple geometric shapes. In this case, we could tell a whole story just by dividing this composition of, this is a story of little triangles versus a very big triangle. And of course we're using that last technique we mentioned by just cropping some of this massive triangle out. We don't know quite how big it is. right? Very effective at a very simple uh, compositional breakdown. Now, I don't know the name of this artist. He, they purely just go by BS on ArtStation, but this has always been one of my favorite examples of big versus small. So this is a massive sense of scale in this image. I think this is a very well-crafted scene, and if we really do break it down, organized very simply, and I think that's why it's most effective, and I think that's the takeaway here. A simple structure, even for something very complex like this, will get you a lot of mileage. So we can see all the little trucks, all the little freighters, the little cranes, are all very small little notes of shapes. Then of course we have these medium ones here in the focal area, and in the, the mid-ground, but it's surrounded. All of these are surrounded by very large and very simple shapes overall. And that altogether is working in harmony to create this sense of scale in this scene. Now another thing that we can do technique wise is you know, with these shapes that we've been talking about, the large and the small ones, is that we can simply repeat them. Again here we have a compositional frame set up and we're just repeating this little triangle. Do, 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 right? J they're just repeating, it's the same shape. but we do get a sense of scale for how big this is. Now, whether you know a person in this frame is this size, or whether a person is kind of this size, or you know that size, or you know just the size climbing up, we can really convey a sense of scale within this just by repeating these simple shapes. One of my favorite artists, Martin DeChambeau, he does this in a lot of his work. You have to check it out. Absolutely talented. But you can see that on full display here. Now, of course, he's also using that first technique we talked about, using large amounts of atmospheric perspective. And where he's using the other technique, right, where we're cropping off the top of these. So we don't know how big these things are. But he's also repeating them quite a bit. So that's something we're going to get to as well, is like repeating certain shapes and of course combining that technique with the other ones is a very easy yet effective and simple way to communicate scale, depth, and distance. Now this uh, concept art from Bungie, I don't know the specific artist, is doing that here as well. So it's, it's a very cool way. You can either just show them very linearly going like that or you could have a more dynamic way to approach it. There's not a right or wrong way to do it, but it is yet a very simple effective method for conveying a large sense of scale on an epic sort of proportion. Now, to go along with some of these techniques is something that I have yet to mention up to this point, and that is we need a human element, something relatable to effectively communicate that. So if we just kind of have like this abstract shape and design, kind of like we can see here on the left, it's kind of hard to tell what that is based off its context. Now, if we see something like a pine tree here, a lot of us on Earth know what that is and have a relative sense of understanding to its scale. That makes it very important in a lot of these, right? So if we're, com if we're creating vast sci-fi and fantasy settings like we can see here in this Halo 5 concept art, this scene would almost mean nothing without the inclusion of the chief here. Right, that that is our human element in this this sense. Otherwise, when we're creating something very fantastical, it, it's just purely not relatable, and therefore it, it wouldn't be effective at communicating its size. Raphael Lacoste does this very well in these two scenes from his. Not only do we get literal humans in his scenes, but we get smaller amounts of shapes and details as well. We do get the humans, we get regular trees, and we get the massive structures or organic nature that contrast that. And it is that contrast that can help sell that scale. Birds, that's another easy way to do this as well. And again, as a closing thought and what I mentioned previously, combine these for maximum effect. Look at this, this concept scene from 
uh, Bungie's Destiny. This is doing dynamic angles, right? We got a nice Dutch tilt here. We get human scale with the, the city skyscrapers. We have big versus small shapes. Again, the little guys, and then we have a massive shape. We're cropping out a lot of that massive shape. And of course, this is layered with atmospheric perspective and depth. So it's really effective to show, you know, damn, this is really big. And so, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope this answers and helps some of you guys trying to portray scale in your scenes. I want to move on to show some of my uh, shout outs for Patreon. First up for the Patreon shout outs would be Timothy Locke. Go check out Tim's work. She does a, both great fantasy illustration and character design. Very vivid and colorful work. She's on Instagram. You can find her and support her as well on, on ArtStation. Very cool. She's been with the community, the Brush Sauce community, for, for ages, doing a lot of the uh, moderating. So i got to give her a shout out for that as well. But yeah, but go check out Timothy. She's, she's in the Hangout with us every Monday. Drop her a line. And for my second Patreon shout out this month, you got to go check out Ryan Hull's blog post. He's he's on ArtStation and he's really documenting his process and his journey. He's he's taking various types of classes online. He's active in several online art communities like Lucid Pixel, my friend Adam Duff's group, and of course he's a supporter of this channel via Patreon. So, yeah, he's doing a lot of documenting on his growth and development. He's doing write-ups, he's talking about effective ways of learning. Definitely check out his art station, give his blog a read. And as always, guys, thank you for watching, subscribing. You can find links to not only the, these fine artists, as well as my Patreon and social medias down below. And have a great weekend.